Hello, YouTube. Now, we've been dove hunting, and we've had success, which it's dove hunting season. Awfully fun before you go duck hunting. And our duck season opens up on September 26. But, in South Dakota, you have to use steel on public land. Now, I'm not for sure about doves. If you can use lead on private yet. But to me, a dove is a migratory, federal migratory bird. So, I, I do believe you'd have to use steel. Even, you, dove, you can't have more than three so why would you be able to use lead on private land and steel on public? So we've always shot steel loads for dove. But this year, it's been a little different. You know, last year, we I think we picked up two cases. And I don't think we spent over $90 a case for the steel dove load. And we shoot a seven shot. It seems to a pattern really nice. And uh it's it's not that it's alright, you know. I don't want to shoot anything heavier than a seven. And uh but but this year there's no I think my son said he found two boxes of steel shot seven and he found that at runnings. Or maybe it was Walmart, but I he said it was like fourteen dollars a box, and that's just crazy. You know, I think we're paying like nine dollars a box or eight dollars a box last year, and this year it's not even there. We can't even find trap loads. You know, they're just not there. We have been finding our duck shot, our two shot. We use two shot for ducks, and then we like to use BB. For uh, geese, and in late season, we might switch it up to tea, because it, they they know better. But I found, you know, there is no recipes on reloading steel for dove loads anywhere. You know, precision reloading has probably been the biggest help for me in my steel reloading. They got a whole bunch of... Uh, if you go to the Precision Reloading website, at the bottom of their website is uh, data for reloading steel. And they got what you want, what you're going to need to figure out. And I, they even had the, they had the steel shot that I needed and they had the wads that I needed. You know, and steel, you don't want the shot to stick over the wad. It's got to be a certain wad because of... Uh, it can't poke holes through your wad because or else you're going to start having your steel shot rub against your barrel and that's going to wear your barrel out a heck of a lot quicker. <clears throat> so I, I've been dealing with them a lot over the phone and they, they've been more than helpful on reloading steel, which... I was going to share my, my recipe. I'll show you what I'm loading and what seems to work for me. Now, the because I'm loading this doesn't mean that it's safe. Nothing's ever safe. So don't find a book. Talk to the guys at Re Precision Reloading. Don't, I, I say do what you need to do. But I'm not responsible for your mishaps, accidents. It's not me. And, this Lee, Lee Reload All too, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, is uh, it's been great for two and three quarters and three inch. You know, I got this last year for Christmas and it seems to be fine for me. And my son's got a a Mech 10 gauge reloader, and we've really been talking about probably picking up the Mech three and a half, and it's the Steel Masters. You know, I wouldn't. That's all we shoot is steel. You know, and when's that going to happen too? When are they going to say lead is toxic, which it is. We're not going to allow you to shoot lead shot through shotguns anymore. So we'll all have to go to steel or bismuth or whatever the hell it's called. And that, that gets expensive real quick. You can see it on their website where a bag of steel is 
20 bucks to the same weight of bismuth is 150 which I'll just shoot to steel but this is how I I reload for my dove loads which I've been doing quite a bit you know I've gone through three bags of sh seven shot but that's what it is this is the non-plated zinc load I don't plan to get these loads wet like if you're duck hunting but uh, <clears throat> my powder drop, you know, and, and if you buy wads from Precision, they throw in the sheets for free. You know, which I'm using uh, um, Federal Yellows. The plastic holes with the, uh, oh, it's a paper based. That's gold metal. Where's the other one at? Tachi Remington. Oh, these are the Remington with the yellow based wall. Sorry. Now, uh, I'm using a Federal 209A primer with long shot, and it says 24 grains of powder. And then it says the TUPRW12 for a wad column, and the wad filler will be an XYFE12520. I'm using one ounce of steel shot. And that puts me, and I'm using long shot for my powder. That puts me at velocity around 1345 at 1140 20 pressure. And I'm dropping at 24.2 or 24. So I'm right there. And that's the 122. And like I said, this might change. You don't, don't go by what I say. You always drop your sh powder and weigh it up. Drop your shot weigh it up don't trust these at all i've actually needed one at like 26 so i bought two sets of those and i filed the inside with a round file until it started hitting that 20 25.8 or 26.2 range so then then i totally filed off the number on it and wrote down three inch steel shot on the little tab right here so i know what I'd be hitting but uh so that's 24.2 and then on my shot sometimes it sticks turn this over to ounces a 1.07 so that puts me a little over an ounce but the next one was like way under an ounce so this is close enough for me 1.07 is like a 1 and 16th load so it's a little heavier but i think we'll be all right and that's my load first you take and what i noticed about uh these remington brass that they're 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 awfully on the high side stick it in there deep prime make sure you're flush and this is probably the fourth time that i've loaded these stick your primer in prime and this is what i noticed they're stuck on there you can't get them off so I just give it a little little tap comes right off and then I'll reopen this up a little bit, slip it in there, drop my powder. And then uh, I should have my wads ready. Something like this. Uh, I also use these, uh, these universals. You don't need to use a wad filler in it. But I, I I don't you know I do believe this it said uh for steel or lead shot and which when you shoot steel you do not want to see holes in your in your wad because that means that that steel is rubbing on the inside of your barrel.
But like here, you could drop a 26.5 with the Federal 289, 26.5, one ounce load. So that makes it a little quicker. But I've been using the TUPRW 12s from Precision Reloading. And I'll drop, push that in. And I need my felt pad, which they recommend the XYFE 250020 20 gauge quarter inch spacer. Push that in, drop your shot, and just give it a little pack. Not much. And then you want all that shot to be below your wad. And then because I'm using such a small shot, sometimes it might leave a hole at the top of your top of your uh, crimp. So I drop in the over top shot card if I can get it in there right. Oh, and don't use a magnet screwdriver to pull it back out. It is still shot. Come on. Like this is the hardest part for me is to get this shot card in there right. That's it. I'll do a couple. And this is like the, the fourth time I'll be reloading these shells. Spacer shot. Shot cover. Like I said, talk to these guys at Precision Reloading. They are very, very smart on their steel reloading and they make a like their own wads for steel reloading. This is a 10 gauge chart my son's been going by for his mech. But it's hard to believe that the smaller the shell, the more pressure it has in your barrel. Like, you know, the 10 gauge, you'd think that'd have a ton of pressure, but it's only at the highest one I could see is a 1055 PSI, where the highest uh, two and three quarters one, that's a three inch. Eleven, eleven, four twenty, eleven thousand four hundred and twenty. I have not yet seen a 12,000 PSI in a 12 gauge. And and these velocities, you know, like they're not super outrageous. 1,200 feet per second, 1,300 feet per second. And then you start thinking about that, uh, that Remington Express. They say that stuff is moving at 1,700 feet per second. That is cooking. So what's the pressure on that one? I'd like to know. You know and I'm going to say, you know, it's all at your own risk. You know, but we're going to have to start doing stuff different because we're not going to be able to 
maybe next year they'll have cases back, but we're not finding it. People are buying a lot more. People are shooting a lot more. You know, and if they can't find lead, they're going to take the steel shot. That's the next thing, you know, and these, these new shooters don't know. They just don't know. That's it. Shoot at your own risk. Reload at your own risk. Don't smoke while you're doing this, obviously. But I can't, can't go by what I say. I would definitely, if you're thinking about reloading steel, so far the best people out there to get a hold of to start doing it is precision reloading. They have gotten some sheets out, which I haven't even bought a book for reloading steel yet. I just been going by what their recipes are and going with it. But that's what it is so far. And they seem to be working through my gun, which I do shoot a 12 gauge Mossberg 835, three and a half. That's the only thing that kind of bust my bubble on that is that I'm trying to get that off. And these are another thing that really slows me up is trying to get these peeled apart. Shot card. Overshot. Oh, I got two of them there. There's another one. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps out.